issues, uh, and they're focused in on specific tools uh, as well. I mean, most of them in our group seem to have all landed in startup and plan preparation, in the uh, getting stuff done part of the work, I guess. So it's interesting that we've, we've, had, we've not put a great deal in examination, so we haven't got the blue uh, in examination for existing tools. We'll put down a couple of proposals for, uh, uh, for, for, pink, for new ideas. Uh, so, uh, we, if we just pick out a couple of the uh, post-its with the, the, the red notes that were marked as important before, we've got comments in this group before about how far the neighbourhood area is spread, defining boundaries. Uh, so, uh, there were some pretty uh, quick wins on that one from existing mapping services, like the obvious Google, uh, Google Maps, but also uh, uh, OpenStreetMap.org uh, is worth considering as well, because you can physically uh, redraw part of the map yourself and be involved in that. Uh, yeah. Then we've got um, an interesting one here uh, uh, related to the experience of uh, one member of our group, something called Contact Creator, which allows uh, helps us out with that. Contact Creator allows for generation of uh, addresses and names within a ward or area. Yeah, among other things, it would let you calculate quite accurately how many doors are on each street so that if you wanted to say alert somebody about something happening in the neighbourhood you right. could accurately plan how many copies you'd need. So that, that's a service that you're aware of because you're wrong in the Labour Party, that's right, so yeah. you can get, sorry, to, to declare your <laughs> to the world. It's part of your political <laughs> career. Um, um, so to, if, if I just stop you, so on. we've got this issue of defining yes. boundaries, if we can... Maybe have a vote on if people think Sorry, this, yes, the these proposals of, uh, of, of kind of using mapping tools will really address the solution. So maybe vote yes if you think yes, brilliant idea, or vote no if you think that it requires more uh, and that there are kind of, it, it can go further than that. So I guess it's the oh, we've got <laughs> one no <laughs> from my It requires more. Yes, yeah, so is the, is the question there that what the existing is sufficient or that, it, that, that it's not good enough? Hang on, let me read this. <laughs> um, oh, okay, I found it. Um, uh, we're looking for a general steer, aren't we? Yeah. And so I think ma mapping, mapping mashups to help communities to define neighbourhoods. And I think yeah. I'll change it. That's, there's potential in doing that. Yeah. So does anyone feel that there's, there's still a kind of gap there? Um, that, that needs to be addressed because we also talked about defining the neighbourhoods in our group as well. Um, Imogen, do you guys think I, that mapping just, pretty much covers it and can I, address the problem? Can I just add to that? Oh. Well, the reason that the supporters uh, table raised that was because obviously it's in the local authorities' remit to accept the neighbourhood forum or not, and boundaries are one of those issues that we're talking about on this table. So it seems to be a really uh, sticky subject, as it were. Um, so I suspect there's lots of technology and tools out there to help people talk about maps, whether or not, as they exist, they would be adopted by a local authority as the tool. I but don't it's know. also talking to neighbouring neighbourhood forums as well, because there can be a lot of dispute over what someone feels to be their home and neighbourhood, and there's some neighbourhood forums that. You know, there are people who live in Mos who feel who live in Mosley who aren't covered by Mosley neighbourhood forums boundaries. So there's also a sense of anything that enables forums and people to talk to one another to have that discussion is helpful as to augment any mapping software. Wouldn't it be great if you could see on a map those prospective neighbourhood forums, those which have been accepted yeah. and those which yeah. are sort of under review? That would be fantastic. So we just talked about setting the boundaries as well, where the community actually sees the boundaries. Because where a community sees boundaries might be quite different from where the council sees boundaries, because yeah. the council might see wards and constituencies and parishes or, or things like that. Whereas for the community, the actual um, practical way that they live their lives might not uh, respect those boundaries. So we thought it was important for the community actually to say how the boundaries work for them in terms of the way that they define their neighbourhood. And Joe suggested right move, um, which I'm not familiar with myself, but um, that there might actually be some existing web-based tools which, which could assist with that. Yeah, we've got quite a few So right, right move is used by people who are looking for property, yeah. and they want to understand where their house is in relation to transport or s schools, is that...? Joe's point was that you could define the area in which you wish to find your search. So initially you can put like 
there and it's a three mile radius yeah. but if actually there's a whole chunk of that that you're just not interested in then you can then so, so it's, it's a way of actually defining, defining a boundary. Because the reality in house hunting is that your community for your own house is actually different from the community for the, the neighbour who's 40 doors up the street. So we've actually all got you know individual radiuses of... That's uh, what Joe was saying, I think, yeah. that actually if we give a tool for everyone to be able to define their own neighbourhood, then you've got this amazing collection of data of, of where everyone sees their neighbourhoods overlapping. I think there's, there's an interesting version of that, uh, defining neighbourhoods based on house price. Uh, Mapimental? No, what was the no, yeah. Oh, Mappy Mental did that, yeah. It was, it was a, a mixture of house pricing, yeah. um, the tube time? and, and train. Yeah, I think it over, yeah. yeah. But also they ran a crowdsourcing competition on whether a place was scenic or not. Right. So they took loads and loads of photos, or they gathered loads and loads of photos, and people ranked it. Right. So you could then choose between those three different things, but you're right, yeah. Okay. And it turned out that nobody could afford to live. <laughs> uh, okay, um, uh, just picking up to other ones then, uh, uh, we had a long list of stuff off the bottom of uh, the problems of time and cost under plan preparation, uh, so this, this uh, was mostly just a list of um, productivity tools, I guess, um, for to-do lists, contact management, calendars, uh, uh, note taking, but also the production of drawings and uh, proposals as well. Um, uh, so there's a number of existing tools out there that we've listed, uh, our longest list in fact, for that section. Um, uh, so I guess if there's a vote there, it's about whether or not, again, that there's sufficient productivity tools out there to actually generate. Uh, so Google Documents would be one, Evernote would be one I listed, shared calendars, uh, remember the milk to-do list tools, and then things like uh, tools for drawing production. I'm interested in this one particularly for plan preparation. Uh, Google SketchUp, a modelling service that anybody could uh, could learn a tutorial for. Uh, so, is that is that the, the thing to vote on there? Whether or not the sufficient tools out there are ready to help with the actual production of something from organisation management. But if you don't feel it's relevant to you and your profession and what you do at work. You might not need to vote, but I suppose we're particularly interested in hearing from those people who may be in the, sitting in the other groups now that help to find those issues to yeah. begin with. Yeah, so time, time and cost in the, the, book, in the plan preparation. Uh, are the existing tools we've described sufficient to cover that time? To, to so, how, how many planners do we have in the room? Two. So, of the planners in the room, in the local authority would lead traditionally in preparing. The, the plans, certainly the, 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 the larger scale. Do we think that there are sufficient tools out there, particularly web tools, or available via the web for communities to start doing that? Personally, I think there's going to be a complete cultural shift, and um, even the kind of technical planning language just just can't be used. And um, so I think it things like citizen journalism and using creative arts and need to be used to uh, enable people to tell stories about the place, um, to say what their feelings are about certain buildings and about certain spaces. And so it's just got to be completely opened up in a way that's accessible to the community. Um, I don't think that there are um, resources that I can think of that, that, that do that. But I think this thing is about creative thinking and it's just more really about common sense as well. And just... Uh, <coughs> Might be practical workshops, things that people can just engage in because you make it interesting to them. You talk about stories, you talk about things that they understand and, and know about. Um, and uh, there might be things about well, how many houses you know, are going to go into this area, uh, what are the houses going to look like, and it's just coming up with creative ways of breaking that down into ways that people can actually understand and, and engage. I think it's also about the fun functional aspect as well. So don't forget, this is sort of going to be a, a semi-legal document at the end of the day and it's used to inform land searches that happen on properties so you need to make, I think these tools will take you so far but there will still be an element for local authorities to, to do in terms of translating that into a, to, to do the aspects of a plan needs to do in terms of those legal aspects as well so but it does need both, yeah. both to work properly. 
I think it needs a framework, it needs very specific guidance so that you're not wasting people's time by just coming up with ridiculous wish lists, but saying that these are actually the parameters in which we need decisions to be made so everyone's clear and that you agree that with the examiners, uh, the independent examiner at the start of the process as well, so that everyone is going in the same direction. And that's quite interesting because I, I think your point's really credible about it's the nature of the content of maybe not necessarily of the plan, but the content that informs the documentation of the plan. Um, to, and obviously the, with community-led planning there's lots of successful projects where uh, communities have used various frameworks and strategies to work together in participatory design, co-design, uh, design by inquiry, charrettes, those type of things. Uh, our observation is that they don't, those actually don't de 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 deploy web much or at all. Um, and so some of these concerns which were raised about who's turning up, the transparency of the process, the process is full of quality but it's not necessarily known by the, the larger community. So it seems to be there's an interesting balance that could be played out between uh, you know, those really rich engagement projects where the, the, the content is owned entirely by the community, you talk about storytelling, and then switching it to processes which will lead to content which actually starts to become adoptable. Because uh, if, if, if there is a cultural shift you're talking about in the language, somewhere along that journey there is a change to this is a document, let's check it to see if it complies. And if it doesn't, then you go back to the beginning again. Yeah. Probably always going to have a focus group as well community people who are going to go along the whole journey with you and they might be the ones who actually turn up physically and get involved in charrettes and different things like that and then specific ideas might come out of, of that group which then you want to test with everyone in the community and it might be that a web-based media is, is then used to test yeah. those ideas with everyone and we talked about giving everyone an equal voice as well and we said that post-it notes like the ones that are up there give everyone an equal voice and if you could do that on the web, so that you give everyone a set number of words to use, and uh, you give everyone one chance of saying what their response is to the issues which might come from a community group, then that's giving everyone in the community an equal voice, so you can say that you know, we have realistically given everyone the chance to equally input the process. So is the, is the question ultimately about the format of the information that you recorded on that process, and then the, for, the way that's then turned into the time involved, in transcribing that into a neighbourhood plan document of the right format for the independent examiner. That's the, that's the process that we have tools for. Everything has got to be structured and managed in a way so that it is feeding into something which the independent examiner can say, yes, I, I have been part of this whole journey and you've structured it in ways which are meaningful and which I can rubber stamp. Well, we're just going off a different So, like that, because I think I really picked up on that structuring and are you in the first group, are you not, can you attend? Actually, it's the team building activity which makes me think, is there something on the web where you could do that, where you could actually uh, define engagement or promises to, to, to take part and, and roles across a period? I mean, we've talked about uh, someone said it was a dude or was managing attendance at a particular meeting. But it sounds to me like there is a, a, any particular neighbourhood might actually create its framework its team, and one of the roles, everyone's invited, but uh, you know some people can put in more time yeah. than others. I think you've got to have a, a whole framework set out at the start so people can see, if I put my uh, <coughs> comments in here, then this is what I know what's going to happen, so this is like the whole process just like you've got up there. So, I'm going to have to pick one to do that, because I see at the end project management, but the project management tools don't actually define the organogram, as it were, the organisational diagram of a neighbourhood. And maybe it's assumed everything is so bottom up, things will just happen. The risk to the community will be that it doesn't. And the city council needs to have that framework also, because otherwise they're going to be wasting so much office, well they're just not going to have the capacity to be advising 30 odd neighbourhoods across Birmingham. Whereas if they say this is actually the, the, the model that's agreed, so that everyone is going along the same kind of journey and the information will be different in different bits but um, this is the agreed framework and so officers can then start to manage their time resource as well. Brilliant.